Hello there and welcome to another a posteriori gears bot tutorial. Today I'd like to go over the sumo bot wrestling. Sumo bot wrestling has been around for quite some time. Maybe not in first Lego League and WRO, but it is part of uh, regional, national, and international competitions. And it covers interesting aspects of automation. Uh, we can use the color sensor, the ultrasonic sensor. You might want to use a gyro sensor uh, for certain movements. And on top of that, there's an aspect of mechanical or physical design of your robot as well that plays a part in sumo bot wrestling. Well, uh, let's get to it. First, let's talk a little bit about some of the rules of sumo bot wrestling. Normally in a sumo bot competition, you would have an arena shaped like a ring. Uh, the border may have some color delineating it. It might be black, it might be red, and the color of the rest of the arena is usually a white surface, a white reflective surface. Obviously that allows you to detect the edges of the arena. Normally there wouldn't be walls around the arena, and the reason for that mainly is that your sensors need to be able to differentiate robots inside the arena as opposed to walls near you. So uh, when you use an ultrasonic sensor, for instance, it may be a bit complicated to be able to differentiate between a robot and standing in front of you and a wall. Unless you had some physical mapping of the arena inside your robot uh, program, which obviously can be done, but it's not normally part of uh, sumo bot competitions. Normally you would have two robots facing one another. In some competitions, you might have robots facing in random orientations. In our arena, we allow up to four robots to compete at the same time, allowing for some interesting dynamics throughout uh, a round. The rules of a round are fairly simple. You have an allotted amount of time in which you're supposed to push your opponent off of the playing field. If an opponent falls off the playing field on their own, you can still win a round without even moving. Uh, basically, you have to stay inside the ring for an allotted amount of time. Well, let's look at GearSpot Sumo Challenges. We can go to our simulator, click on World, go to Sumo Challenges, and we'll start with Fixed Dummies. Note that in the sumo challenges we present in GearsBot, all of our opponents are basically static blocks. So these challenges are there to basically allow you to create a robot that can identify and push off opponents. But these challenges won't necessarily prepare you for the ultimate uh, arena combat against a dynamic foe, uh, which has a robot just like yours or a slightly different configuration and tries to tip you out of the field at, while you're trying to push them off. But these challenges present the basics for a sumo algorithm. Okay, in, in the first fixed dummy world, we can basically start with just hard coding uh, our movements to push, let's say, the block in front of us off. Let's start with just that. Note for the purposes of this tutorial so far, I will be using the simple single sensor line follower robot. It has a color sensor, which we, we, we would need to detect the border. Uh, and we, we have an ultrasonic sensor as well that allows us to detect opponents in front of us. But for starters, I'm just going to use this simple robot configuration with a very simple program to just knock off the first block in front of me. We'll start with just moving forward for a certain amount. Uh, there's a bit of math that we can do in, in this part that's kind of interesting. If you think about the robot's geometry, uh, basically you have a wheel, and the wheels are identical to one another. So uh, each wheel would have its diameter, and we can calculate how far a robot roughly would travel by calculating the outer perimeter of this tire. So if we either knew the radius or the diameter of this tire, we would be able to calculate how far our robot would travel in one single rotation. And if you go to robot, uh, your robot selection, 
and you look at our uh, dimensions, we actually provide wheel diameters and we say the wheel diameter is 5.6 centimeters. And if you remember or have learned your geometry, uh, you would know that a circle's perimeter is its diameter times pi or two times the radius times pi. So we can calculate now uh, roughly how far the robot would go with one single rotation or 360 degrees of rotation. Let's do that. We can use a simple uh, calculator as long as you have pi or you can estimate pi as 3.14 and this would be our perimeter 17.59 centimeters roughly give or take. So we can say that in one rotation we're going to travel 17.59 centimeters. Well how far do we need to travel? Let's look at our arena again from a further top, top level view and what we can do is we can use our ruler to measure the distance from where we start to roughly the edge of the arena where we want to go. And we see that with the, the distance is roughly 90.4 centimeters, right? 90.4 centimeters. So we can take the distance that we would like to travel and divide it by the perimeter of our wheel, which was roughly 17.59. and we would get roughly 5.2 rotations. So let's try that. So let's say we will travel 5.2 rotations at whatever speed you choose and see how far that takes us in the field. Great, and we see we've stopped right at the edge of the line. Cool. Uh, you can also see that we've shifted a little bit to the sides. Uh, you can try to vary the speeds to see if you can get a, a slightly better accuracy. Okay, let's see that again one more time. Okay, uh, we push forward for uh, roughly five rotations based on the math we did using the ruler and calculating the perimeter of the wheels. Okay, let's try that one more time just to make sure we have a repeatable process, an algorithm that works, uh, that we've calculated and measured our distance to the edge properly. And indeed we have. Uh, if we wanted to, we could uh, now maybe try to do this four times uh, after a successful uh, move all the way to the edge. We can just move ourselves all the way back to the same place where we started, turn ourselves 90 degrees to face either the left or the right opponent, and uh, push off again, something that could probably be uh, repeated four times in a loop. So let's try to build uh, one part of this algorithm. We'll uh, move forward. We'll move back the exact same amount will uh, turn around. For turning around, we need to decide which side we're going. In this case, my right wheel is gonna move forward, my left wheel is gonna move back, so we're moving left. Uh, we're turning left, and I'm not exactly sure how many rotations I need to go. Uh, there's two ways that you can go about doing it. One is using trial and error again, and the second would be to use some kind of geometric calculation uh, in a two-wheel differential system in order to figure out how far uh, one wheel needs to go forward and how far the other one needs to go backwards uh, in, in the same amount, but one positive, one negative, in order to rotate uh, a 90 degrees about the center between the two wheels. And the formula for that is given as so. And you just need to figure out the radius between the wheel and the center of the robot, or you can get it from the robot configuration as well. Uh, if you look at the robot, um, uh, the wheel spacing uh, suggests that it's 15.2. Okay? Uh, if you plug that in and plug 90 degrees as your desired turn angle, 
then you would get 244 degrees uh, that the wheels need to rotate one forward and one backwards in order to turn the robot roughly 90 degrees to one side. So in order to actuate the turn, I would go to our motion blocks. Uh, and for this case, I would choose the move tank block uh, because I want to know for sure that one, one motor is rotating uh, backwards and one motor is rotating forwards, a specific number of rotations or degrees, right? In order to achieve that 90 degree turn based on our formula. Uh, of course, you can use a move steering or, or uh, just use this block with some trial and error to figure out what a 90 degree rotation requires. Uh, but that I leave to you to um, uh, play around with. And in the end, you would have a simple algorithm uh, that you're trying to get, which is to go forwards, knock your peg off, go backwards to the center, uh, rotate about, uh, about your robot 90 degrees, move forward again to knock the next peg, repeat that four times until you knock all four pegs. And if you get frustrated with this uh, part, uh, it's meant to be a bit frustrating. Uh, it shows you that without some further automation and sensing, it's really, really, really hard to achieve even the simplest uh, path automation for your robot. So good luck with that. If you have achieved uh, doing this using a hard-coded uh, method, please, let us know by uh, a comment, uh, maybe uh, link it to another YouTube video of your own uh, showcasing uh, your work.